In the last module, we developed a one-factor linear model that allowed us to describe each score in a dataset on the basis of three separable components, the grand mean plus the treatment offset for a group an individual is a member of plus individual error, that is, the degree to which an individual differs from the mean of the group that they're a member of. We also developed a sample model that we'll be using to make inferences about that population model when we're working with sample data. The reason for doing this was that we can now describe mathematically the location of individual scores in a dataset on the basis of separate components, and one of them that is especially of interest to us, these T sub j's, which are the estimate of the TOS sub j's in the population. So, our inferences about treatment effects are really about those TOS in the population. And we left off with the insight that we can develop a null hypothesis that all of those TAW sub j's, TAW 1 through j, are actually zero in the population. We'll be able to test this null hypothesis with the statistical methods we're about to talk about, but notice that in one fell swoop we'll be able to tell whether the factor under consideration matters in the population. That is, if we can reject this null hypothesis, we'll be able to say something about whether the factor matters in the population model. There are two methods we'll use to develop this statistical inference, the analysis of variance approach and the general linear test approach, which is a general model comparison technique. We'll start with the analysis of variance approach, and then we'll see that the general linear test is really the same as the analysis of variance, but it formalizes our test in a way that's a little more general. To remind ourselves, our inferences are about these TAWs, so what we need is a method that allows us to test at once whether we think these TOS sub j's are actually zero. And the way we're going to do this is by an analysis of variance. It may seem strange that we're talking about variances when in essence we're talking about sample means and population means. That is, these TOS are really a representation of whether the means of those groups are different from the grand mean. But we're going to do this through an analysis of variance. Before we get to that, let's take a sidestep and I want to introduce you to a new distribution, a distribution that's going to allow us to test these TAWs from our sample data to the population data. That distribution is known as the Fisher-Snedeker. Now as you might have guessed, this distribution bears Fisher's name because most of the methods that led to its development were owed originally to Ronald Fisher. The distribution was named Fisher Distribution by George Snedeker, who was a professor at Iowa State University. Snedeker actually created the first statistics laboratory in the United States and named this distribution in honor of Ronald Fisher because most of the methods that led to its development were really things that Fisher came up with. Somewhat hilariously, Fisher disliked that Snedeker named the distribution in his honor and actually wrote some letters to Snedeker about this. If you look in the digital archives on our university library, you can actually find the correspondences between Ronald Fisher and George Snedeker. But suffice it to say that the Fisher-Snedeker is a very useful distribution for us, and it's what will allow us to make inferences about those TAWs in the population. Let me show you what this distribution asserts about the world, and then we'll see how we can actually use it to make those inferences we want to make. The Fisher-Snedeker is based off of variances, and really it's about a variance estimate in the numerator and a variance estimate in the denominator. Now what Fisher and Snedeker both found was that when you take the ratio of two variance estimates, two estimates that are trying to estimate the same population variance, the distribution of those estimates follows a specific function, which we know as the F or the Fisher-Snedeker. Now just a little bit on notation, in the actual formula here, this little squiggly is distributed as. So the distribution of the ratio of variances is distributed as this F distribution, which I'll show you in just a second. Now one more thing I should point out. In the subscripts for the F, we see two new symbols. They're nu's, nu1 and nu2. And those are the degrees of freedom for the numerator variance estimate and the degrees of freedom for the denominator variance estimate. Remember when we were estimating variances from simple samples, we had degrees of freedom in the denominator when we took the sums of squares divided by the n minus 1. n minus 1 is simply the degrees of freedom, the number of independent pieces of information that are used in that variance estimate. So the degrees of freedom from the numerator is simply the number of independent pieces of information that go into the numerator quantity and the degrees of freedom for the denominator are simply the number of independent pieces of information going into the denominator estimate. When we looked at estimating the population variance, I even showed you some sampling distributions of variance estimates. 
Here are some representations of those. When we have small sample sizes, as we do in the top, the sampling distribution of the variance, you might recall, had that very large skew. That is, we were likely to get very small estimates of the variance, but we would actually have some very large estimates some of the time. Once we got larger samples, that distribution of the variance estimate actually became less skewed. Now these distributions all have the mean equal to the population variance. That is, we know that our sample estimate of the population variance is unbiased, but that skew is going to be important because it is the skew of the sampling distribution of variance estimates that gives the F distribution its characteristic shape. So again, the Fischer-Snedeker distribution is simply what would occur in nature if we were to take from the same population a variance estimate on the top divided by another variance estimate on the bottom. As long as we're estimating the same population variance with these two separate samples, then we'll get a distribution that has the F shape.